The Wall Street Journal recently reported on the Blade Runner curse. If you're familiar with the 1982 sci-fi called classic starring Harrison Ford, constantly reissued in some new director's cut or special edition, you'd be forgiven for thinking the Blade Runner curse had something to do with a mysterious crone casting an evil eye on the producers, vowing that the film would spend eternity in an editor's suite. But that's not the whammy the journal had in mind. The movie conjured a Los Angeles of 2019 whose steamy streets team with flying cars and neon advertising, writes Don Steinberg. Then came the curse many of the robust brands shown thriving in the cinematic future, ran into financial troubles in the real world. Director Ridley Scott thought that using real corporate titans at the time, Coca-Cola, Atari, RCA Corporation, Bell Telephone, Cusinert, Pan AM, Koss Headphones, Singtau Beer, would help convey his gloomy foreboding about the triumph of corporate power in our not-too-distant future. By my count, of the eight companies depicted in the movie, five either disappeared, were broken up, or were bought by other firms. Atari, which controlled 80% of the home video game market, went belly up, though the name has been bought and revived by another company. Koss and Cusinart went bankrupt, though Conair bought the Cusinart brand out of Chapter 11 in 1989. Bell Telephone was split into a bunch of different companies. Coca-Cola survived, of course, but in 1985 it took it on the chin with the new Coke debacle. Advertisement hence the Blade Runner curse. Appearing in the movie apparently jinxed businesses. And yet, many companies are lining up to appear in the forthcoming sequel, Blade Runner 2049. Maybe these firms aren't superstitious or perhaps they know something that's lost on science fiction writers. As my National Review colleague Kevin D. Williamson noted in a brilliant essay Hey, where's my corporate dystopia, the idea that corporations will one day take control of our lives, has been a staple of science fiction and left-wing Jeremiah's for generations. For all their alleged power, big corporations are often powerless when it comes to the simple task of surviving. As Williamson notes, only 67 of the firms in the Fortune 500 in 1955 remained there by 2011. The same dynamic holds true for another favorite supervillain the super-rich. French economist Thomas Piketty argued in his widely celebrated book Capital in the 21st Century that the rich only get richer over a long period of time, creating a permanent aristocracy of wealth. And while it's true that the combined net worth of the 1% has increased, the actual people in the 1% come and go. What explains this simply capitalism itself? The Blade Runner curse isn't real it's normal. The economist Joseph Schumpeter famously pointed out that monopolies can't last forever in a free market because monopolies get ossified and overly dependent on their existing business models. Entrepreneurs and innovators figure out new techniques and technologies that run circles around the big guys. That was the whole point behind another Ridley Scott masterpiece, his 1984-themed Super Bowl commercial for Apple Computer which symbolically dethroned IBM as the Orwellian colossus bestriding the personal computer industry. As Adam Smith noted in The Wealth of Nations, the only thing that can make a monopoly permanent is government, because only government can prevent the sort of innovation and competition that undermines every corporate behemoth. And that's why the most plausible dystopian visions, like Orwell's 1984, involve the state exceeding its rightful authority and imposing its idea of how everyone else should live, humans, replicants and businesses alike.